So I have a question for you. Are you authentic with women when you approach? Is approaching actually making you better with women or are you getting worse? I remember literally going out to bars, doing 20, 30 approaches in a night, hitting a little bit of a flow state at the end, only the next day, the next week to become worse. If this is you, then I want to talk to you about this very thing, giving your power away when you approach and what to do about it and how you can actually reverse this process to become more free, more confident, more social in all areas of life. Now, with that said, before we do, I want to invite you to like, subscribe and share. Uh, definitely share. The channel doesn't get any all the views it used to get, so every share really helps. So let's dive right in. What do I mean by this? This whole idea of you're getting worse from approaching. Well, for years, I got worse from approaching. I'm going to tell you a story. When I first started approaching, I was terrible. And the more I approached, actually, the worse I got. The more rejected I was starting to get. And I just didn't understand what was really going on. And I finally came to this realization. It took a long time. It took a lot of looking at this, that I was approaching to get something. I was approaching to either get like validation from the woman, to get a date, for example, a date from the woman, to get sex from the woman, to uh, get her phone number. I was, uh, I was approaching to get control or get power over the woman. So I felt stronger as a man. All of this was to get something from her, from the external world, from the world at large. And I'm going to be honest, that bullshit just does not work. We, out, we go out there, we've got all these insecurities with women. We really just want connection. We really just want a girlfriend. We want to feel connected. We want to feel confident as a man. But when with each approach, we're giving a little bit of our power back away to the human being in front of us. We're saying, you have power over me. And this is why we as men begin to resent the approaching. You see, we as men, we see our personal power comes from our, our senses of being a man, of being masculine, as being confident, as being ballsy, as being able to step into tension and go for our dreams. But every time we do it, there's a little piece of that being taken away, right? Every time you hand a little piece of yourself to the woman and say, will you validate me, please? Deep down inside, or you put up a wall and say, I'm not gonna let you in so you can't hurt me. Uh, you start to feel more rejected inside. You start to feel like, like there's a part of your self-esteem chipped away. That's because you are chasing validation in this external world somewhere. And the honest truth is, is there's no validation, no way you're going to build your confidence by getting validation from the external world. You're only going to build a more fragile ego. If I got a ton of validation, I got what I wanted. Then the next time I didn't get it, it kind of sucked. It kind of hurt. You see, real strength, real confidence comes from really learning to accept the reality that's in front of you, the way it is, being really solid, open, confident, open-hearted, and powerful in the face of that reality. And so when I started doing my approaches, my socialization practices, my flirting practices, to develop that sense of being, everything started to change. Now I'm gonna explain what I mean by that. We're gonna go into a little bit of detail here, but I want you to understand at a deep level that when you start doing these exercises not to get, but to go more free, to be more authentic, to be more of the true you, which is a whittling process. You got to whittle it down. It's kind of picture the statue of David being chipped away. That's when you become ultimately the best version of yourself, more powerful, more confident. Then with each approach, you start to develop with each interaction, you start to develop actually more confidence, no matter whether they tease you or they like you. And what the funny thing that happens is the more confidence you develop, the less reactive you are. And that's a key word here, reactive versus proactive. And the less reactive you are, the more proactive you are, the less you get rejected, the more people just start to like you. And you're going to have to really, to develop this, we have to understand what the difference between reactive and proactive. And I'm going to go into that in just a moment. So remember, with each approach, you're either damaging your self-esteem chasing validation or you're developing self-esteem personal power confidence and social skills through learning to be the most authentic real version of yourself okay so hold these two ideas in mind let's go to the first one let's take a look at what it is to be truly reactive on an approach well reactive is a form of neediness for example right like if I'm really needy, please validate me, please validate me, please tell me I'm good enough, which is where a lot of people start with approaches. They don't know they're doing it, but there's that little part of them that just, please, if you just like me, I'm, I'm going to feel better about myself. 
If that's going on, that's reactive. You're chasing something outside yourself. That's part of the reactivity. You want the pain inside of you to go away by getting something from the person in front of you. Validation, a kiss, a phone number, sex, whatever it is. And then what's the next thing? Let's talk about being stoic or putting a wall up, acting confident. Hey, I'm solid, I'm confident, I got my shit together. But deep down inside, your subconscious knows that you're not, or you wouldn't be putting that wall up. You'd be open, you'd be free, you'd be having fun. You're, you're locked up in your head, yeah, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. And every time you tell yourself that, the subconscious mind hears that lie, that presupposition, you're not good, dude, or you wouldn't be doing this stupid behavior, right? And I did that one a lot. I say stupid just to kind of emphasize it, but I did that one a lot. The stoicness was just, you know, just didn't work. And then there's distracting and dancing like a monkey, like, who do you need me to be? Instead of begging, needing, and leaning in, I'm going to dance and entertain you and make you laugh a lot. And every time you laugh, I think I'm winning. But in reality, all I'm doing is entertaining you. You might hang out with me all night, but never get attracted to me because all I am is an entertainer. You've all got a friend like that, right? That guy friend that's constantly trying to make everybody laugh, the class clown that's kind of goofy, but at the same time, you don't really respect them. That's the dancing monkey. And I'm going to be honest, I went through a lot of these phases and it was only when I finally woke up and realized that the real power is found inside of you. It's found internally that I began to change the way I approached. I didn't stop approaching. I didn't stop flirting. I just took on a whole different mentality. Okay. And this is what spurred on the video I did a while back that, that did really well. You guys should check it out. It's called Letting All Women Go. We'll put a link to it in the description. Definitely check that video out. It's a really good video. But let's, let's throw that aside for now and uh, let's stay with this video for now. Let's go back to it. So how do we develop this proactive behavior that builds so much confidence? Again, you got to start looking inside. With every approach you do, every high, every stop, every flirt, whatever you do, you got to start to look at it as what am I feeling inside that I don't want to feel and start to take a deep look at, can I get comfortable feeling that? To do that though, you got to have an open heart. You got to understand what courage is and that's what letting goes about. You see, in embodiment, the whole idea of doing something and facing your fear is fantastic. But if you do it from your head, it doesn't work. So the first thing you got to do is learn to feel your heart, learn to relax. And I got tons of basic meditations on my uh, YouTube channel. You can definitely check out the full body scan. I'll put a link into that to help you learn to feel more. So the first step is when you take these actions, learn to feel you. What are you feeling? What are you feeling in your heart, your chest? Is it sad? Is it happy? What are you feeling in your stomach? A lot of times there's anger in there, repression. What are you feeling in your hips? Is it completely numbed out? So many guys are so numbed out in their hips. There's no turn on. What are you feeling in your legs? Can you feel the ground beneath you? Can you feel the weight of your body? If you can't feel you, then most likely all your attention is on the person in front of you trying to figure out what they're feeling so you can become who, you, who they need you to be. I remember I had a client once many years ago and I would ask him, he was racing so much in his head, not wanting to feel that I would ask him with every approach, he'd walk up to a woman, talk to her and I'd come back and say, so what are her eye color? What's her eye color? And he'd be like, uh, I don't know. And I say, okay. I want you to go approach that woman right now, talk to her for two or three minutes, come back and tell me your eye color, come back. So what's her eye color? Uh, I don't know. This went on four or five times in a row and I would directly tell him, get her eye color when you go up. That's how bad his mind was racing. You see, learning to come down from that race and actually feel is the most terrifying thing because now you got to take a real look at what you feel about yourself. It's great when you're in your room alone, taking a look at what you feel about yourself. It's great when you're meditating, taking a look at what you feel about yourself. But if your pain, like Eckhart Tolle would say, your pain bodies are dormant, then you're probably not going to get in touch with what you truly feel about yourself. But go do two, three, four or five approaches, then sit down and meditate and watch all the stories come up. What are you feeling in your heart? What are you feeling in your stomach? What are you feeling in your legs? Process those stories. You see, the main goal with every approach is not to get a phone number, to get a date, to get sex, to get anything. It's to go more free and learn to relate to your own body more. To get triggered if you get triggered or to experience more joy and more peace and more freedom. The ultimate goal is to experience that freedom. I can feel all the way through the ground in my body, be present in front of you, open hearted, having a great time 
and I can invite you into that joy I'm feeling. That's the ultimate goal. And with every approach, you get a step closer to that. If you look at it this way, if you look at it proactively, I'm not going to rush through the emotions anymore. I'm going to do 10 highs today and I'm going to feel each one of them, try to create connection and presence with each person I say hi to, each woman I say hi to, and I'm going to learn to feel my own body more. I'm going to learn to let her feel me, feel what I'm feeling inside and not hide it anymore. You can call that vulnerability, you can call that confidence, because ultimately true vulnerability, strong vulnerability is confidence, the willingness to let people see, hey, yeah, I'm a little scared and I can own it. Oh, I'm sad and I can own it. It doesn't matter what you're feeling inside. It's that you own what you're feeling. And with each approach, you can do that, whether you do one approach and you meditate, two approaches or 10 approaches. And what I recommend to people, to men, is when they're going out to approach people, just do two a day and then Clean up all your thinking, your negative self-talk. Ask yourself, am I feeling through my whole body? Is my mind racing? Am I all over the place? Learn to relax into your body because that's where the real power is at. So in a nutshell, being proactive is being comfortable feeling every bit of energy that runs through your body without closing off to it, without shutting down to it and realizing that you deep down, if you didn't have all these insecurities, would not care at damn what that woman in front of you thinks of you because you don't know her. It's your ability to get rejected and go, huh, she doesn't know me. She doesn't owe me anything, right? Or, you know what? She's being rude to me. I don't owe her anything. I walked up, said hi. She decided to be rude. I'm going to leave or vice versa. I walked up, said hi. She decided to be rude to me or the other way around. I, uh, I walked up to her. She decided she didn't like me. So that's her prerogative. It doesn't mean anything to me. This is... This is all just is what it is. When you become truly proactive, you'll stop making the outside world define what you feel about you. And that's the most powerful place to be. Now, what I want to do for you guys is something kind of special. If you've watched this video this far through and you really like it and you're starting to understand this principle, I want to invite you into putting a comment below and tell me, do you want me to create a, a a desensitization video where I talk about how to desensitize proactively with the steps involved. I started to write one out and I wanted to create this one first, but if you want that, I'll put that together. How to truly be proactive while desensitizing to highs, to stops, to socialization, learning to take your power back and go truly free inside. Because when you go free, I mean, nothing feels better as a man. When you own your own power and people can't take you out anymore, not just women, people, life, and you can go out and just be you in the face of everything in the world, think about how good that feels. It feels amazing. Okay? So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you want me to make that video, definitely put a comment below. Definitely put a comment about your understanding of this and what your experience with this is because it helps us all to grow. And definitely check out my previous video on uh, letting all women go, which I did a few years back, which got so many views. And uh, let me know what you think. And uh, with that said, I'll be checking these comments out the, definitely the week after this video comes out. And uh, I'll be getting back to you guys in the comments and uh, then taking a look at creating that other video if you guys really want it. Now, with that said, remember, only the confident really live. See you in the next video.